Remember the last time we discussed how an op amp can perform calculus operations, like integrations. Today we'll explore how an op amp can convert current to voltage using a trans impedance amplifier. Think of it as a magical bridge that connects current signal to voltage signals, which is very important in applications like photo detectors, where we need to convert light into an electrical signal. Want to know more about it? Let's go. At its core, a TIA consists of an op amp with a feedback resistor. The current flows through this resistor and the op amp converts this current into a corresponding voltage. It's like measuring the flow of water through a pipe by checking the water level in a bucket. Let's dive into the design. The basic TIA circuit includes an op amp, a feedback resistor and an input current. So the output voltage is given by this equation. For instance, if we have a photodiode generating one microampere of current and we choose a feedback resistor of one mega ohms. The output voltage will be around minus 1 volt. Imagine using this trans impedance amplifier in a light sensor for an automatic street light. During the day, the photodiode generates a high current due to sunlight, resulting in a higher output voltage from the trans impedance amplifier. This signal then can be used to turn off the street light. At night, the current drops, voltage decreases, and street light turns on. It's like having an electronic chicken that tells the street light when to wake up and when to sleep. Let's visualize this with a simple circuit diagram. This is the op amp, which has inverting input. This is the current source input to the amplifier circuit. Then the non-inverting input, just connected to the ground. Place this feedback resistor between inverting input and the output of the op amp. This resistor determines the gain of the trans impedance amplifier. Then we can place a small capacitor in parallel with the feedback resistor to stabilize the circuit. The output of the op amp provides the converted voltage signal. And finally, the power pins of the op amp to provide appropriate power supply. For example, plus 5 volts and minus 5 volt for a dual supply op amp. Let's consider a practical example. Assume we have a current source like photodiode, which generates current from 0 to 50 microamperes, and we need to convert this current into voltage from 0 volts to 5 volts. Frequency of the signal is 10 kilohertz. For this, we supply 15 volts to VCC and minus 15 volt to VEE. Using the given design goals, we need to convert a maximum current of 50 microamperes to maximum output voltage of 5 volts. The feedback resistor RF is calculated like this, which comes like as 100 kilo ohms. To meet the circuit bandwidth requirement of 10 kilohertz, we need to calculate a feedback capacitor to ensure stability using this formula, where RF is feedback resistor and FP is bandwidth, so we get 159 picofarad. We'll use a standard value of 150 picofarad. So this is how the circuit looks like. We'll use a OPA170 op amp from Texas Instruments for this amplifier design. Now we have to calculate the gain bandwidth product for this application and check if the selected op amp will work here or not using this formula, where CS is input source capacitance, CD is differential input capacitance of the amplifier, and CCM is the common mode input capacitance of inverting input. And from this formula, the required gain bandwidth product is 11.03 kHz, and the gain bandwidth of the OPA170 is around 1.2 MHz which is more than sufficient for our system. To design an effective amplifier, 
we should consider factors like the bandwidth of the op amp and value of the feedback resistor. And that's how we can design a simple trans impedance amplifier. Well, we can use simulation tools like Tina TI from Texas Instruments to simulate this circuit as well. You can check the description for the details. And that's a wrap. We explored the fascinating world of trans impedance amplifiers, learned how to design one and saw where it can be used. Don't forget to check the description for references and simulation files. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button as well and stay tuned for more exciting content.